Right, welcome to FETV Zoom Room. Today we have a new Zoomie again in the room, Roy O'Donovan. Roy, welcome. Joined by yeah. Dennis Bean, Derek Collin, where's Dennis gone? And uh, I'm Darren Murphy. So we thought Roy was the one in Australia, but Derek, you look like you're in Australia at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice Possibly sunny carry tool. Carry tool. Yeah. yeah. No, look, <laughs> carry tool is always like this yeah. there. Look, looking out the window there now, actually, it reminds me of like, you know, game day, waking up that that's. Start of the season, pre yeah. pre season games, lovely and sunny. Why, how are you finding it over in Australia there? Ah, oh, yeah, all good, all good. It's uh, it's a bit different for everybody at the moment. Like, with the the sun, the sun is still shining, and uh, get to go for my walk and a bit of exercise. So it's a, uh, it's not all bad. It's a strange time, all right, for football in general, isn't it? Um, yeah, especially I suppose. Go on, Derek. I was just saying he. Like, we were just talking there. Right? You're just settling in with six games, was it before the before this yeah. all kicked off? Yeah, six games back at Newcastle Jets uh, before this all kind of happened. And it was as I was saying to you, it was great to be back. You know, it was nice to be back here. We knew the place, we knew the landscape, and back playing kind of style of football, I enjoyed again. And uh, this has really just turned everything on its head. Like you know what I mean? It's mm. it's absolute chaos. We played a couple of games uh, with no fans, like you know, behind closed doors, but uh, it wasn't the same really. I think. We're better off waiting until you can get the fans back because it's it's a big part of it all, like you know. Yeah. You've been sitting because in that chair ever since. Yeah, I'm new to it. I'm dying, but the flu can't get out of it. <laughs> you woke up with the flu this morning, did you? I was I was going to cancel. Yeah, I I was uh, I was thinking I had the worst case scenario, but uh, no, I think I have a bit of tonsillitis. That's what's wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. We actually did a, a a podcast before with Roy. We never released it, and um, it was the time before you went to, to Brisbane. But we was there, was there, we was just, there too many swear words. No, no. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> we never released it. We didn't. We didn't get round to doing. Uh, we were kind of doing the season two thing. Then we took a total break. Era we were all just busy and stuff and doing stuff or whatever. But it, it was interesting to to have it. I think I'm going to put a note there, but. I suppose you went to you went to Brisbane. You were going to Robbie Fowler. You're excited with working with Robbie because he was, you know, a striker kind of quite similar play played quite similar to the way you played. And you know, you watched him growing up as a child. And now, you know, you've seen him as a coach. And obviously, you've left Brisbane. And I suppose look, it just goes to show when you you you're working with pe- people in football, everyone has different opinions or different uh, ways of doing things. Obviously, uh, how did you, how did you, how did you find it like at Brisbane or different to what I was used to? It was like it was a bit different because I was, as you said, I was expecting like he was an instinctive player, goal scorer. You know, I was expecting a kind of a very attacking style of play, loads of balls coming in, into the box or balls in behind. But because Brisbane, the club he came into, had conceded so many goals the previous season. He, he kind of, the kind of style of football got quite defensive and very structured, and uh, I, the style of play that he wanted from the striker was basically coming short, kind of for, for for balls like for most balls, you know, playing in pockets or playing like as a kind of an other midfielder in a defensive sense. So you're coming in, you're showing up for the ball in the number ten spot, and when you're out of possession, you're kind of helping out the midfield, like you know. So a lot of my game is making runs behind and kind of being a, a pest for a centre half. So it was a it was a complete clash of styles from what I was used to. So it was a, it was yeah, it wasn't what I was expecting, but uh, you look you you learn something from every situation and uh, I really appreciate you know, being being back at Newcastle and it's a positive style of football that, that suits me, like, you know. Just well, I was point. reading I was reading Roy on that on that um on, on that we were talking with uh, Owen O'Connell there a couple of a couple of weeks ago. Um just on on ball playing and, and, and the new the fashion of, of the style of football now. And I was reading about you, like you were talking about that in some interview, I think it was, it was the examiner a while back, um, about the, the, the build-up play and he was just a constant passing game. We were talking that day and we were talking about a balance. Like you can't beat a balance in football where, there's, where, where you can mix up the, the passing style with a more um, dynamic kind of a fluid style where, where, where centre-halves or, or full-backs are looking for, ball, for passing lanes and looking for balls straight to the centre-forward's feet or in, in the channel. Like, I love seeing football played like that. And with Stephen yeah. Kenny even, even coming, coming on board now with the Irish team, like, he's, not a, he's not like a... It's not a ticky-tacky football that, that he does, you know? It, it, it's, it's more fluid. 
did you find that that, that Robbie Fowler's I suppose his, his tactics were, were just all build up play yeah look I, I suppose that's the big thing like you're talking about Stephen Kenny there who's experienced and has done it for years and years and has got his pattern just right you know but it comes down to the personnel you have. If you want to play that style of football, I have no problem. But I think it has to be, there has to be a little bit of give and take for the personnel that you have, you know. Um, you have to kind of let them be themselves in that style of football as well. But yeah, I found, found because it was his first job and it was a, probably a bit of pressure on that, that it got, it got a bit stiff, like, you know, the, the style of play that he wanted to kind of uh, put out there. And um, if you want to play that kind of style of game and you want... Someone show, and don't get me wrong, I show up for the ball and you hold the ball up and all this kind of stuff. But I want possession to be risked at times if I'm going to make these runs in behind. And I don't think you want to risk possession too much. So, um, yeah, it was just a bit of a clash. But since I've left, they brought in um, Scott McDonald, who is a little bit older than me. So he's, he's not making any runs in behind. But he comes short all the time and he kind of plays as an extra midfield player. So it suits him perfectly. So it's just, I think it comes out to personnel. If you're really... You really want to play a certain style of football. Personnel is everything, you know. But I think the more experience you, you get as a coach, I think you obviously have to to bend with the players that you have to get the best out of them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Dennis, just quickly there, because um, you know you would you're, you're kind of quite similar to me at the moment, kind of started coaching quite at the same time and taking over teams. And I I think is there's a massive learning curve as a coach lately because you kind of got sucked into the Pep Guardiola style of football, really. It's, you know, the perfect game. And you think, that, like, especially the way the, the coaching badges are structured and, you know, it's 4-3-3, three, three, they want you to play out from the back. It changed the whole underage school boys to set up for that as well, trying to try get our players playing. But there is, a, there is a big learning curve about, you know, you're not going to be able to play that perfect game and to adjust and to adapt. But do you think... When you're first starting out as coach, especially if you came from like professional football, that these coaches need to go and learn the trade for a couple of years and figure that out and find and find that out and then you know go from there with it. How did you find it? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think Roy hit the nail in the head there when he said it's about personnel. But it, it's it's you know you go into you go into a team, especially if you go into senior setup. <clears throat> you know these boys are playing away for years. You know and you have these these lads that are playing either four four two nearly all their life, especially once they're in the league level, you know, and they're used to doing that. And then all of a sudden, you're coming to them and saying, "Well, I want you to play over from the back. I want you to do an overlapping full back. I want you to do third man runs, whatever it may be." But the pieces to make a third man run is a hold up player in 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 that in that number ten role. You need somebody else to recognise that ball is going to go over the, in the third man run, and all these little pieces of the jigsaw. Takes ages to to do it at, at at underage level. If they're used to it all the way through, then that's fair, that's fine. But what I found is coming into the, was the Monster Senior League side of management was, as much as you want to try and change the team you're in, the teams you're playing against are so set and and are playing in one style that you could come in and try and play nice attractive football, but now all of a sudden you one ball over the top and you go behind you. Bloody hell! We've had possession for the last forty minutes and nothing has happened. So it's the style is is, is so hard to get right, especially as a young player. So as Roy said, a manager coming in like, like Fowler, coming into a team, his personnel didn't suit the way he wanted to play, yet he still wanted to stick to his, and it became very regimental and probably at times became very irritating doing that because you're, you're saying, well, we have to have to do this. Well, yeah, but I want the ball in behind. Well, tough, you need to face up. And as a player, that's very frustrating. But I think you're dead right. You're cutting your teeth at somewhere to, to kind of find your own style and to understand people, understand players, because ultimately, you know, when you're when you're when you're a footballer, you're in your own little bubble to a degree. And especially if you play at a, at a decent level, and you're trying to come down and help other lads, your frustration level can get very, very high. You know, and like I keep going back to Dom's interview there, where he said that light bulb moment. You know that you know it yeah. might take you six months to give a lad a light bulb moment. Whereas, we'll say, when you've really got your style together and you've got your understanding of the players, it might only start taking a month, two months after that then because you can, you can open up and be a bit more, a bit more open-minded to, to being able to play different styles within a style as well, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, definitely. And as well as we all know as players as well, we've all 
got calls from you know managers and clubs and stuff like that and got excited about it straight away went down there saw the stadium saw the training grounds so, like you know discussed the contracts and stuff but like even raw yourself there like looking back at it there now and you've you, you you're like really probably more experienced than than any of us going playing around the world with managers would you would you look back now and say to players like really have that conversation about what you want me what style you want me to play where do you want me to play what do you want me to do and then make the decision off that yeah i think that look i think that's that is an important part of it but the problem that comes with that if you're a manager that really wants to get a player in you'll tell him anything to get him in the door you, you'll tell him whatever style of football he wants to play that's what we play when you when you come here be it striker attacking you're going to score loads of goals you know and then you come in there and it's kind of something completely different like you know what I mean but um, mm-hmm. but definitely look I think as a, as a player as I've got older you know I've definitely got better at doing research on the, the kind of style of football and the club environment I'm going into because uh, you know you can you can rush into things all you know and I've done it myself I went on a few loan moves when I was younger and you rush them because you think I have to play I have to get myself out there and you you, you go somewhere and you're kind of not appreciated and you kind of don't it doesn't fit you you know what I mean? You don't really enjoy it. So, um, and and like, and you kind of learn that as you go along that you should probably sometimes just dig your heels in and wait for the right opportunity to kind of pick his head out, out of the ground. Like, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, look, have a, I think having a conversation is great. But as I said to you, managers a lot tell you what they want want you to hear. Derek, did you have any experience of, of that? Um, you know, fitting into a club, fitting into style, um. Maybe thinking research better or anything like that, or I, I know I suppose it wasn't a thing back in my day, Darren. To be honest, um, I think football back then, like and we were talking about the two thousand and five team, right? That, that that you were on. Like I watched it there recently, and um, we played quite direct at times. Like Mick kicked every ball long, um, yeah. but we but we still played great football. Do you know, like when, when we didn't, we we put fierce pressure like you like you would have done and you still still do to this day like pressing pressing defenders hard and winning balls back and when we got the ball then we played unbelievable football and it was kind of similar up in up in Bowes with under Stephen Kenny like we played amazing football there and we won the league that year um, and but but yeah there was a balance and it, the, back then I think there was more trust um, on the players to first of all they were coached to deal with any situation that arises on the pitch and you t- and given confidence to make the best decision then yourself what to do in that in that situation and I think that's I think that's what Stephen Kenny he, he puts together the right as you were saying with, with the personnel you have he gets together the right personnel to fit what he wants to do and then he nearly trusts the players when they're in the situation because I look at tactics boards and yeah they, they have a part to play but sometimes when you're moving the tactic the, the, the players in the tactics board everything has to fall into place like I can understand from, from a dead ball from a goal kick or a throw in or a corner or whatever it is, the tactics board makes so much sense. But within the majority of the game, it all depends on where each player has has fallen into on the tactics board. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't all fo- follow the path that the tactics board is set up to to, to show you. It, know? it, can, it can be kind of sabutio football, can't it? You know, yeah, you, you move you I, I move can... a man in a man in a man, and all of a sudden there's this space on a tactics board that you never really have in a pitch. Yeah, you know? and so in that's reality, why you have if, to be if, able to go over that if you need to. Yeah, and in reality, if one of those um, positions on the tactics board doesn't follow suit, should your whole the whole thing you talked about goes out the window. Do you know what I mean? So I can understand it from 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 a, a, an overall, but I wouldn't put huge emphasis on that. I, I think putting trust in the players to deal with a situation, and if 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 you come across a situation where um, the player hasn't handled that um, th- th- that situation well, that then you, you you coach them on that and and you, and you highlight that, you know. But for me, I, I suppose I, there was a bit of a light bulb moment with my small fella. Like he's he's only seven, but he was training one day and they were doing all small passing drills. And he said to me, "Dad, I love long passing. I love can we? Do, I'd love to be doing long passing, do you know." And, and it is it, it kind of reminded me back when I was a kid and, and when you grew up playing football. You do like hitting those forty-yard passes, those thirty-yard passes. There's, there's a, a certain buzz comes out of finding a man or or hitting a long pass. So something. I just I, I like the balance. I like I like the fact that you can play lovely touch football and two touch football and stuff like that. But then when it opens up, hit that long pass, hit that yeah. ball into the channel. But it has to be good. And and I was reading there was something Stephen Kenny had his um attacking um 
football philosophy. On, it was online yesterday. I came across it, and, and that was one of the big things. Was it was uh, centre halves being able to hit that that forty yard pass? You know. Mm-hmm. But I think that's the key word, though, isn't it? Pass is the word, isn't it? You know, mm-hmm. it's not a long hoof yeah, no. of the pitch. It's a long no, no, pass. No, no. And, and even if you look at the Guardiola thing you were talking about more, you know, like uh, the Bruyne has a 40-yard pass, but it's a pass right into that area for somebody to get on into. So it's not a, yeah. it's not a hoof up the pitch. Mm-hmm. But I remember uh, Brown that used to be at, uh, at Hull, the manager, he came to an England under, under 21 or, or an England senior team. And he took a training session there. This was when Hull were just playing long ball all the time, hoof ball all the way up the time. And next thing he did a training session where it was two touch move. And, all, and I was like, what the hell are you coaching two touch and move where you just hoof it? And he said, wait a second. He said, I'm only playing the players I have. That's not the way the style I want to play, but I'm just playing the players I have. And it's a great, it's a great thing to have in the back pocket to be able to change like that, you know. And if anybody saw the way they played, when Tissel hasn't a clue what he's doing. Actually, he was doing the right thing. He was playing the players he had. Yeah. Actually, yeah. on that, Dennis, but back in John Coffin's time with City, like when when Shawnee McGuire was there, like they played great football. It was dynamic. It, it was it was fast. It was it wasn't um, it wasn't all ticky tacky. So playing out of the small yeah. pass passing at the back. But then when Shawnee McGuire, it's amazing when you lose a player of that quality or, or a player so influential <laughs> like that. Then the the style that you had been playing doesn't seem to work anymore. You know. Yeah. 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 That's true. And I think that's that's it there too. Like. If, the game we play, like since we're kids, you, you play for enjoyment, you know, and even when you become a professional player, you still want to enjoy it, you know what I mean? People say it's the best job in the world, and it is if you have the freedom to play the game that you want to play, you know, talking about your seven year old there, and the same thing at Cork City. And I, I remember that team under uh, Johnny C when they had Maguire, and they, they did play a different team when he was in it than when he when he left because he, as you said, he, he was so dynamic, he was kind of and the you know ahead of his game at the time, really, for Cork City. He was at the top of his game. He was kind of hungry, came down from Dundalk. He had a point to prove. And he looked quick. He was scoring headers. He was just scoring hat-tricks uh, against the, the best teams in the league. But they couldn't fill that void. So, you know, I think that that's the thing. If you get stuck into wanting to play a certain style of football, if you can't kind of replace that moving part, it's very difficult to, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're not flexible. I think that that'd be what I've learned over the years. Yeah. In the and I, I think I th- that's true, right? I think what Sean Shawnee McGuire did as well is he brought a lot of confidence to all the players around him. And when when he was gone, and I think players started stiffening up a bit, and I think their confidence. I, I think that I think that's absolutely key there because I remember running that team. You know, there was a time there when someone said, "Right, who, who's going to score today?" You could have named off five players. Do you know what I mean? Was in that in that team? You know, if Roy's having a bad day, John would do it. If John was having a bad day, George would do it. George, or the, well, he doesn't score much to be fair to him, but he, he set up a lot of them. But there was a Carney from midfield. You know, like it was, there was so many different players. Moz come up from the back from a header, Ben or whatever it may be. You know, um, so we had so many different parts of that team that if we did lose one of them. Doyle actually at the time as well, we were still okay. We had three or four really, really good players that could turn in. And that confidence, that breeds of, oh, he's having a bad day. Let's go and take him off. Somebody else will do, the, will do the job for him. It's rare to have that mix. And we were very lucky that time, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, Dund- Dundalk seemed to have that for the last good few years as well. Yeah. Dennis, it, it seems that if they lose players, it doesn't matter. There's someone else to take their place and, and confidence That's, stays And they score the from level, all you know? over, you know. Duffy coming in from the wing, you've hoven up top. You know, you have midfielders coming through scoring, you know. So they, they have that they they're they're very, very lucky that they're blessed with, with, with players that can score. And the score scoring breeds confidence, simple as that. You know, yeah, there's, there's, and, there's, and, and on that and Dennis head headers is a huge part of Dundalk's game. Yeah. Like I was doing yeah. a piece there on on heading and the head rate I'm involved with head rate, so I was doing a piece on that and thirty percent of Dundalk's goals last year uh, were headers. And centre halves come up with Gartland or Huben or, or whoever, yeah, and set plays as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's, but it must be very frustrating as a coach, I believe, if your philosophy is one thing and then having to change it, but then it must be extremely good as a coach when you have changed your philosophy and you're getting the right results. Because we, being able to, be, to adapt to those scenarios, like that, that's, that's a skill that, that's very hard to, to conquer, you know, because if your philosophy is get it long or do whatever it is and you play off the percentage ball and all of a sudden you've three or four young lads coming through and they're used to playing it from the back, how you change your style to match them or vice versa you know if you're coming in want to play and then you've a, an older team there and they want to play long ball it's, it's very hard to, to change your way on it but, but you have to you've no but choice that, no. Uh, that's where I think coaching comes in Then, I think players young players need to be coached all the skills of the game 
and then depending on yeah. depending on, on yeah. fashion or, or what's what's in vogue at the time or or what certain managers mm. prefer or it could be a foreign manager it could be so that you're able to adapt then that you've been given all the tools to be able to, to adapt to whatever manager wants if you look at it coming up along there, four four two was was it? No, there was, there was no other change to four four two. And even if you come in to Munster Senior League, you know four four two and changing that to even a four one four one with a sitting midfielder, geez, it's like the whole world's had to change him. You know, <laughs> you know, we, we, we we top, how are we going to score? You know, but we used to play with wing backs quite a bit at times. Then as we, we used to vary it up and play three centre halves so they can play with wing backs. You know, so I don't think it was that um, that rigid. No, when we played in Europe, we'd play a four five one and. So I, we were able to change it, but four three three wasn't something we, I, I suppose we, we did back then. You think you're no. kind of really open, I suppose, with four three three back then, wouldn't you? It was quite like all the styles, whatever they were. The wings. It was always quite defensive. You know, you always had two decent centre halves who not get beaten. Do you know what I mean? That was kind of like a, a defensive midfielder and stuff like that. But look on it, on just moving on on it, batching and goal scoring and stuff like that, Roy. You're you're doing well. You've scored goals now all over the world. Um, I know you've talked to me personally about it, about an Irish call up, like Stephen Kenny is in now, and I think he know he probably like knows you from League of Ireland, and knows knows your your Australian record. I'm putting a question to you. Have you had any contact at all with him? No, no. Like I, I obviously not. No, he's a busy man at the moment. Yeah, but obviously so so that. like just on on that would like would. Would you make contact with him? Ah, oh, no, you would. That's just not the way it's done. Like, you know what I mean? If, if someone wanted you, yeah, they know where to find you. But uh, even, look, even at 34, I still have got. I think I've still got plenty to offer. But uh, you know, it's 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 difficult. You know, he's he, he's a manager. He's going to be, he's going in there under pressure now because Mick McCarthy's kind of stepped down as well. So uh, he's going to do things his way. But uh, yeah, look, like I, I, I've seen, seen we, we, we've we've all seen team. we've all seen this. You know the the type of players that have played for Ireland in the last couple of years, you know, fellas in League One and League Two getting a chance and the fellas in League of Ireland getting a chance. Like, you've been around a long time, you know, experience is key. You know how to score goals. You're always in the right position. That's hard to coach and hard to teach. And Ireland is always lacking a good goal scorer. For me, I'm thinking, like, you know, I know, I know, I know you're thinking that's not the way things are done. But when you kind of look outside and you say, why not? Why not give... give Give yourself an opportunity and just send him. Like his number might be easy to track down his email to say, look, I'm hungry. I want it because I, I I do think you you would have an opportunity. You're definitely good enough. You want to play for your country, you know. And why not? Why not go into a friendly? Come on, see how you get on. You know, go into a training camp. You yeah. know, you go you go training with the lads, and then he has you in the camp with the other lads, and he says, geez, actually, you know what? He's up to the pace with him scoring goals and training that's that's how it goes but like, so it's the same as kind of doing doing these, these this media and stuff like Sky Sports isn't going to call any of us or RT or anything you know get up off your ass go out and do it and I I, I, I think you should like I think especially no maybe not Mick McCarthy they're sorting out more should Derek, Derek and Stephen on speed dial he'd better send them this clip and we'll be all sorted and we'll, 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 all, we'll all be super agents in the morning <laughs> I could do a brown envelope Ryan right? he brown envelopes <laughs> no what I, no, I, I, mi- I miss those brown envelopes from back in the day <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I, I think and you probably agree I mean, on a serious note if you're if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, yeah. if you're a coach or a manager now at the moment and you know, something's on the like a player is contacting you and he's hungry and saying like, you know, I think I'm good enough to come here. There's no, there's no reason they've not to lose. Then do you know what? Actually, bring him into training. You know, like give him a chance, give him an opportunity. Absolutely. Look, I, I think, I think, I think you're dead on. But it's very hard, as why you said. You know, when when you're at when you're at a professional level and you're you're ringing a manager and you're saying, look, you know, can I come in and have a have a chat? You know, like. It's very rare that's ever worked. You know, I think that lad from America at that time when he was brought in for that one game over there, you know, so it's very hard actually to do that. You, 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 there, there's kind of channels you have to kind of go through. But I, I do firmly believe in what you said, or in terms of in terms of what Roy has and, and, and what you do, Roy. Like, that, that knack scoring goals, as you said, like Fowler had it, and that knack to being in the right place and doing it in the multi-leagues throughout the years. You know, people say Vardy was brilliant. He came all the way up through and he scored in every league all the way along. 
you've done it all over the world against different climates, different different personnel, different you know different uh, uh, styles. What I'm looking for styles everywhere, you know, and you, you've seen everything and done that. And like you look at Shane, who, who's who's a wonderful player. I, I I genuinely think Shane is Shane Long, wonderful player, but he just doesn't have that knack of scoring goals, you know. And and that's that's just his ultimate downfall in terms of everything else he does is is really really good, but he just can't score that goal. And like if you look at what with Shawnee McGuire, that's exactly what Shawnee did. You know, Shawnee just scored goals. And to get a player that can score goals in that many leagues, it's very hard. To, it's very hard to get. And especially when you're saying that Stephen's under pressure and he needs to X, Y, and Z, well then ultimately you should nearly always go back to well, who can I get that can score goals? Because when new players coming through um, and League One, League Two level, you know, and they're getting call ups, then what's wrong with what's wrong with somebody who has the experience of scoring goals? And getting him in to have a look at him, but I just think that channel of how do you navigate that path to talk to him is quite, is, is a tough one, you know. So you just you're gonna have to get it subliminally into his ear somehow, you know. Yeah, well, I suppose. Look, you, all you can do, and it's the thing you've done all your life, is just keep doing the same things and keep you know working hard, scoring goals, and being the best you can be, and just hope that you know things kind of transpire. Yeah, it's tougher. It's t- it is tougher being on the other side of the world, though, isn't it? it? Is. You know, the, you know. No, the only thing is, look, all the games are on the TV, uh, stuff like that, and you know, I I do a little bit yeah. of media work here and there. But um, look, I I, I kind of I said this before. I think the, the day I kind of left to I left the UK to go away, I kind of a little bit left the international scene behind a little bit because um, I think unless you're playing in England, really. It's quite, it's a bit at least elitist with the even the way things are run with the Irish national setup. It's like if you're playing the Premier League, you're in the squad championship. You're probably in the squad, and now they're kind of looking down the leagues a little bit as well because we've got a smaller pool of players. But like even anyone that went to the MLS, you know, it was the end of uh, Sean St. Ledger's Irish career as well. It wasn't so much a Robbie Keane, but you can understand that he, he at the time when he went to the MLS, he already had 50 Ireland goals and he was a, a yeah. legend. So he kind of carried it on, but. Um, Look, I, I, I still think I'm playing a really good level of football. and I, like In terms of the league I'm playing in, I'm playing against international players there all the time. I'm with some. And um, you know, I'm in good shape. And I'm, I'm yeah, so, on, so on that, Roy, if you, if, you put, if you put a full comparison on that, we'll say with obviously being a Sunderland, Coventry, Hartlepool, big step forward for you. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was all you, Dennis. Yeah, that was all me, yeah. Um, but no, at the, the level you're at now, because again, even though they're on TV, you still really don't, you, you see the names and you understand who they are, but they're not household names as such. You know, kind of way. So where would you see the league sitting now, playing all the leagues in the UK? Really, honestly, very good. It's a very high level. Um, you, you mentioned a little bit there about the conditions and the heat. That plays a big factor because you've got to be super fit to play yeah. here, to, to play a high pressing game. Uh, you, like you've got to be super fit especially the way I play the game anyway you know everything is uh, dynamic it's at pace you know you're throwing yourself around a bit um, but style of football over here I think it's fantastic the way they want to play it's very sim- it's be more similar to the Dutch and kind of um, Spanish style of football than it would be to the UK style of football if you know what I mean so it, they want to play attacking football there's a lot of 4 three, three, but they want to get it down, but if it's not on to get it down and play it, they will play the ball in behind and use the space and, you know, have players with pace and, and in the wide areas. And, and, you know, it's a good style of football, but it's, as I, as I said earlier, it's peppered with lots of international players and lots of caps there, you know, so I'm playing against... And, and, and on that, Roy, like, where would, where would you see your pace at the moment? Like, have you lost pace over the years? Are you still like where you were? Or, or is there a small loss? Or uh, no. Because you, you were a flyer in your day, like you were. Yeah, yeah. You, you were so athletic. Yeah, no, definitely back in the Cork City. Being a right winger, I got to use it a lot more, I think. I think as a right winger, you get to show your pace, especially in attacking positions. As a striker now, you're playing the offside line. You don't get to probably use it or show it as much that once or twice in the game you do get in behind. But uh, I'm certainly as quick now as I, as I was then. But I probably and, would just... you, and, and would you, Roy, would you be like, say if you're doing a list of the players in Australia, it's hard for us to keep track of the game over there, like, you know, with the time difference and everything, and even even footage here. But, like, would you be up in the, the, the top players in the in the Australian League at the moment? Well, yeah, I, I would be. I mean, regarding goals to games, I've in the last six or seven years, since I uh, moved away, I've scored it better than the goal every second game. Like, you know what I mean? So, That's good. That has Go been, and even at, even at Brisbane, Roar, you're saying, I'm kind of saying the style didn't suit me, and I, I moved on from there. But, 
I'm still still their top scorer now. Like you know what I mean? So yeah, that's, that's you know and, and, I mean? and and to be fair to you, Roy, I, like I don't think that's all your game. Yeah. Like I think what you bring to a team yeah. that, that that you have that that Roy Keane kind of um, lift the team, which are tackles, which are getting stuck in. Now I know you can get it can, there's a, there's a thin line with that, but I think when you're when you're on your game. <laughs> It lifts the team, it lifts the crowd, and, and when you get it right, I think it, it's it's more than it's more than goals that you that you bring to a team. Yeah, and if I, as you said, if when, when I when I can manage that, I'm I'm allowed to have a bit of freedom to kind of lead the team a little bit. Then it's great. If I feel that I'm kind of hemmed into what I'm been told to do and kind of being shepherded into play a certain kind of way, it doesn't suit me. I lose a little bit of my my zest. You know. Um, and that, that's free, what free, happened for the free spirit. The free, yeah, the free you know, spirit. Yeah. and sometimes that's just about the way you speak to somebody as well. I think mm. you can actually make someone do what you want them to do, but you have to get into their psyche a little bit, and maybe that's where the clash was. That, you know, that kind of way. And if you think, if you think of last week, Derek, you know, we're talking to Ashley, you know, you say, what, what is the player that excites you? Yeah. you know, I think Darren, you yeah. asked the question, what is the player that excites you? Look at that. That is Roy. You know, had the yeah. pace, had the had the power. Had the attitude, and, you know, and then would throw in that sixty-five foot lunge from nowhere into a fella. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and, <laughs> well, uh, and, and, and that yeah. gets a crowd going. You know, I, I, I know it's easy. I was saying here, he's 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 a guest today, but like Roy was one of my favorite players. Like what Roy did it, as a centre half, watching someone else do like a holding midfield or, or, or a defenders um, showing those traits further up the pitch was fantastic to see. It was so so unique, you know. You wouldn't see it in centre forwards or right wingers that much, you know. Colin yeah. O'Brien had when Colin O'Brien played right wing, he had a bit of it too, you know. So, um, yeah. which Did I remember you just when went, go on, sorry, there. Just on what you're saying there, Derek, it's a good point. Just like centre forwards and right wingers didn't really have what you had. Do you think your upbringing was a lot to do with that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, you know better than anyone. You know, the north side, uh, um, especially back in the nineties, it was a tough. Who on the north side? Yeah, you know, you, you had to be, you had to be tough, like, and you know, you play a lot of football. I, I, sorry, no, right, but our, our South Siders had to get tough to match you, North Siders, <laughs> in you see. So it was, it was like a chicken and egg thing. That's true. You yeah, had to be tough. To be fair, I, 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 I thought I thought you were just wondering about the speed part. You had to run away fast. That's what yeah, I thought you were. Yeah. Right, <laughs> the tough part. <laughs> that was uh, part of the speed. I had to get away from things pretty quickly. You had to run fast, get away from trouble. I didn't. I didn't know what the tough this part. I didn't uh, hear that. Believe me, you learn to run fast in Tarnan. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, I, I think that comes back to it. I, I think that we're all from a generation that you played on the street, you played on the road, and that was nearly as competitive as it was at the weekend with your, your kind of your junior side, you know. So um, yeah, I know we it, spoke it, about uh, this before, and uh, so when we were growing up, like uh, I I was living just outside the north side in Carrie Navarre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but my cousins were inside in Dublin Hill, where where Roy lives, and I I remember I used to love going into uh, weekends and stuff, Colin, because there used to be like uh, games in the park there, and the the different parks used to play each other. But it was absolute like kick shit, you know. It was like you know. Yeah, but there wasn't even <laughs> eleven aside or anything. It was like basically whoever turned up against whoever. Yeah, but I, I I was just looking back and I was thinking maybe. Maybe the likes of, I, I didn't know Roy at the time, but he could have been playing that game. You know, Mickey Buckley could have been playing that game. Who Colin else Roy's Murray. on that side? Kevin Murray. Kevin Murray. Alan Falvey, uh, Kevin uh, Murray. Kevin Murray, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I remember they were great games because obviously growing up playing Karen Navarre in the Greens and stuff, I was probably one of the, the better players out there. And then going into Dublin Hill, you kind of find out, geez, there's actually other good players around because it was all GA when I was growing up. And I used, I used to, I used to, couldn't wait to go in there. And, and, and that's kind of lost this small bit now, wouldn't it? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Maybe I, I, there's I a lot of that... there's a lot of onus on coaches these days to to yeah. fill that void, you know. Yeah. yeah, there is. I think that's that's it. Now I think people get their football now from that kind of three times a week they get the hour with the coaches, and it's all kind of skills and and, and kind of you know. To be fair, that's brilliant as well. I think that's something I didn't have a lot growing up. Proper coaching and and skills, you know. Um, from my junior club, it was kind of have a game of ball, really, like a couple of bags down for goalposts, have, have a seven aside, and then see you at 11 o'clock for the match. But whereas now they're getting a lot of proper coaching, so they kind of have an understanding of the game tactically when they, when they do kind of move up the levels. But uh, what you, I think, yeah, there's not enough people playing on, on the street anymore. It's just a, a different generation, isn't it? Yeah. 
Dennis is gone, is he? Sick of me. Dennis, <laughs> Dennis is sick of me. He's going to the back to salt the, wait, the green. My, my, battery, my battery's going to go. I have to get a charger. Where the fuck is it going? <laughs> hey, there's no cursing in this. <laughs> <laughs> but right, I remember when... Um, I just I remember you playing when you went to Sunderland first. It was early days, and I think you were playing Chelsea on Space Wars, and you were outstanding. And that was one of your first games, I'd say, that were on telly. I don't know what game, how many games you had played before that. Yeah. But um, it was in the Premiership, I think, at the time, and, and you, you were marking John Terry was marking you. Just yeah. you were some handful from that day. And I think I, I always felt that all you needed was a couple of maybe. A ball going in off your arse or yeah, off your shin right. or something. You just needed something to to go in the nephew, yeah, and I think your career would have gone that way in the Premiership. Do you know what I mean? It's all those it's fine margins all the time, you know. And I felt yeah. that that's all that's all you need. I think you had everything to be a top uh, Premiership player. Yeah, look, I think that you're probably right. As in regards to, I just needed a goal or two to change things mm. because I think then you're kind of looked at as a first team Different. player. I was always kind of trying to find my place there. And I think Roy Keane would probably even say that I was a little bit unlucky because I, you know, I, I gave everything for, for the football club and for him as well. Like, you know, and I was just a little bit unfortunate because I think had I scored a goal or two, I would have stayed at that level for a longer period of time and the uh, international caps would have come a lot more frequently. Like, you know, but uh, it's one of these things is the hand you're dealt sometimes and you kind of, you move on, you make some right choices, you make some wrong choices, but it's... it's you make them work. You just yeah, make your exactly. choices work. Like there's no point looking back because then you wouldn't have your you wouldn't have your kids, you wouldn't have the lifestyle you have. No, so everything there's no yeah. point looking back. You just make whatever decision you you, you take at the, the time you make it work. Yeah, yeah you spot know. on. That, that's pretty much it. That's for all of us too, isn't it? That's you know, mm. fo- football can be a very cruel game, and I'm you know I can say I was unlucky there, but I've I've been very lucky, and I'm still very lucky. I'm playing the game that I love still, nearly twenty years down the track, and. I still feel I'm like doing that at a very good level, like you know. So yeah, well, well, when you see the Australian games, actually, right, they look so. Um, it it looks like a great the quality over there, the stadiums, the pitches, the the glossiness of the te- of the cameras, like the crowds. Yeah. It does seem to have. Um, I, I suppose I think we, we probably don't appreciate how how good a league it is over there. Yeah, I suppose that's the thing, like because you don't maybe you don't know a lot of the the kind of characters that play, and you don't get to kind of build up during the week with the media. It's you're probably kind of. You're kind of away from it all, but uh, it is, look, it is a good standard of football. And as I said, you're playing in proper stadiums, you get the TV coverage, you know. Uh, it's what, to be honest with you, it's what the League of Ireland could have been a long time ago if it got the right TV deal. It just shows you, like, it's well, well, hopefully that's in the works. Why, hopefully, we can we can emulate that type of let's hope so because I, I think the quality and the talent that comes out of Ireland, uh, and it, for the kind of League of Ireland has never really got the credit that it deserves, I think. And we've all played there. It's a, it's a great level of football. But it, it, look, it, it needs that little bit of push and you need finances, like, you know. And, and on that, Roy, actually, I was listening to the, uh, Kevin Doyle did a, did a kind of a Facebook or an Instagram uh, talk with Alan Cawley there the other night. It was, it was great, very interesting. But um, Alan Cawley asked him about the difference going, moving from, say, Cork City over to the Premier League and, and how he found the differences. And he said, well, Kevin's answer was, look, to be honest, he said, I didn't find any difference. He said, I was playing at a, at a level with that team in 2005, he said, and when I moved over there, I still found I just moved up that, that level very easy. I didn't really, we were very fit in, in 2005, the players were fit. Um, my touch was good. I, I was as good as, it, or if not better than a lot of the players that were there when I moved over, you know, and he said, I didn't really find that the level, a, a big difference in the levels. Yeah, yeah, and it's, I, he took, like, it took to water, really, didn't he? He kicked on mm-hmm. from there and he never looked back. Like, and he, Mm-hmm. Again, it comes down to he made a very good choice there. He went to the right club at the right time and it just suited his personality. And you know, mm-hmm. he said he had a great career off the back of that as well. But uh, you're true, the, like the League of Ireland at that time was very strong. You had the likes of, you know, ourselves, our, our team was very good. But you had the Derrys, the Shelburne's, who were all strong and had their superstar players as well. So, you know, if you had a TV deal that it could have stayed full time for a lot and yeah. the stadium started to get better, I tell you, like the international team. The Irish would actually be a lot better for it if it had yeah, that. It, it was it was never going to happen, Roy, with the with the old regime. With, with when you see what's happening with the finances, the way they were thrown around, and the way we were we were just kept down deliberately. You know, like it, it, it's it's crazy what what we, what was left go on. You know, back then, and I just think the new people, the new the, the word the words coming out of the the new regime's um, moats is is very encouraging, and I can only see us um, go in that direction. Let's hope so. But if, yeah. but if you if you look at that though, 
like how viable is a, a TV deal for the for the Aircom League? And what I mean by that is, like in Australia, you've how many million people? I don't know. There's Melbourne, is Melbourne and Sydney, and five million people. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so it's a, it's a huge, huge country. And, and, it, and you know, if, if you look at sports, you know, rugby, uh, Aussie rules, and probably football come forward, you know. With, with us, you GA, you know, then we've rugby, and then we've, we've probably, the, the football comes a bit after that. So how viable is an actual week-in, week-out deal? Because if you look at, the, at RTE, you know, they're cutting people left, right and centre at the moment in terms of, of finance. And sport is the first, live sport is the first thing to go because it's, it's the most, it's the most expensive thing to put on. For them to pre-record something or, or, or do a show, it's, it's a lot cheaper for them to do that way. So how viable is an RTE coming in to do live football properly for DVD, TV deals? Because I, I just can't see where the, where the market is for them to be that but, worried yeah, but, or that interested but, in. Like. But you're on about GA, Dennis. Like, soccer is the, is the most participated sport in the country. And also, like, when you... What, yeah, but it's not the most not- supported, though, Derek. But if you were to take out how many people go to League of Ireland matches week in, week out, like GA matches don't have that, that level of support week in, week out through the whole season. You know what I mean? If you take all the clubs that people go to matches, you look at the Irish soccer team, you look at what happens when the Irish team are doing well. Like it, it definitely isn't viable if you're basing it on the John Delaney era because everything that they, the foundations from football on this island, they, they were just made of, of sand. You know, yeah. so nothing, there, was no, there was no base there to, to grow from. But if, if you take the new regime with Niall Quinn and like even you see Jerry McEnany and his president, if you see these guys, it's League of Ireland. We need to, that, that's the foundations of football on the island is the league. It's the professional. It's where the kids that dream of playing football as their career. That's, we need to have that on this island. Fair enough if, if a few get to go and play in the Premier League. But we, need to make, um, we, need to, we need to make it here that, it, that it's a proper industry like what they did with the rugby. No one would have thought that the rugby was going to be a viable option back in the day with the Corcons and, and all them until they, until they changed their own and did something, you know? It needs to be set but up but as, you, uh, as a subscription kind of based uh, thing with, you know, advertisers coming in then and, and, and advertising on it, I think. That's probably the only platform. It's not going to work off RT because people pay for RT anyway, you know, and it's on there. Where's the money? Where are they going to get the money to pay the clubs is the thing. Like if you're mm-hmm. talking about a TV deal, it needs to be big money that's coming in. They need to make big money, and are they going to make that money? Like the likes of probably the perfect time would to, to do it would have been when Dundalk, they know we're in um, Europe and stuff like that, like you know, and, and start to pick up. But like again, I, I think I think you have to start the other way around. I think as a start the other, I think you have to start seeing the infrastructure in the league before agree, the TV yeah. starts coming in the other way. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. you know, you, you look at that Dundalk. Probably the richest club in Ireland at the moment, I, I would imagine, with all the European ones that they have. Yet they still haven't, they, they've done their pitch, but they haven't really done the infrastructure. So the experience for the fans coming to a game isn't exactly great. You know, they're, mm-hmm. they're coming to watch a good team. They're not coming to get the experience. And if you, you know, right, when you're in a, in a stadium in the UK, you know, the experience is an hour, two hours beforehand. They're in there, the music's on, there's food, there's the pub, all that kind of stuff. And then the matching is just the, the cream on top, you know? So I think before we start looking at RT deals, we have to start looking at the FAI saying, right, can we start doing it from the ground up? Can we get Cork City linked in with local clubs? Can we get players through? Can we get more fans through the gate? Can we then build our infrastructure and do a proper, proper pyramid all the way up before we start looking at that side of it, you know? But, but to, get, to get from A to Z, Dennis, you're, and you're dead right, and I agree totally, to get from A to Z, you need to make all those little steps yeah. in between. You need to go up to B to C. And that, that includes, you saw what happened at the Dublin Derby, the biggest game, yeah. biggest game of our year. And because of high winds, the game went ahead, but they couldn't show the match that was due to be live on RT. That's yeah. the infrastructure. There's the problems with the infrastructure. I yeah. remember sitting, I couldn't wait for that game. And yeah. next thing, I was so gutted when that game wasn't on telly. And, and, and when it is on telly, then they need to, be, they need to use the top, the top cameras. It's, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, it, it's, it's a series of small steps. To get, to get to where you want to be. And if they're showing a game, they have to have all different angles all over the pitch with, with different cameras, and the cameras have to be good quality. They have to have saturated look to it. They can't have... Like, like if you put Man United and Liverpool, or Man United and Man City, on one of the League of Ireland pitches with that one RT camera that they use, that wouldn't look good. Yeah, the product. The product doesn't look right. I, I, like, like you said a while ago, you turn onto an Australian game, an A-League game, and you're saying it's glossy. The cameras are good. The stadiums are full. It's colourful. They're looking onto the right stands. It's, it's, there's people mm-hmm. at the ground. 
I think even Cork City is one of the best grounds around, and you've got Shamrock Rovers now as well. It's very good. But, for example, the product has to look right for people to be interested in it. When, when you're looking at the Derry Nan stand, for example, you're saying, uh, do you know, it's, yeah. do you know, it's yeah. not a great level of football. If you don't know the game, that's your thinking, because you're like, oh, it's not good. Like, really, they should have turned the camera around to make it look like a better product. That's small steps. Mm-hmm. That's the small steps you're on about to, to kind of yeah. building blocks to something else, like you know, your A to Z. Yeah. Yeah, the advertising boards around the, the ground. I know that they were they were trying to bring in um, the electronic ones. No, it's all those yeah. small steps. It's the sound yeah. system that that they play things on during the during the game. It's 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 as you said, it's building blocks. Yeah, yeah. it is. But but I, but I do. But, but the thing is, the, the League of Ireland did this as well. Like I mean, it gets a lot of media coverage. So there is there is yeah. you know people are interested in it. People like you know. I like taking interest in, in football. I know people say, oh, there's a lot of fellas go over to Man United Liverpool game. That doesn't matter. That means they're football fans for me. You've got to get these people into the League of Ireland games or how do you get them in there? And, 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 and that's what I mean. It would say we have to start, instead of looking at TV, we have to start looking at the other way around. Because if you start looking at people going, right, we, we have a full Cork City at six, seven, eight thousand. Everyone was talking about how many people were coming to a game. You know, they were going, bloody hell, City are showing seven, eight thousand. That was bigger than some League One clubs at the time. But again, when you went to watch a game, just looking down on the Derry Nan end, instead of going, turn it around, look at the thing and say, right, look how good this can be. And you, like, there's nothing better than a live game. Nothing better than a live game. Because you get the buzz, the atmosphere, you get the children's in that goes all the time, you get the shed in that goes all the time. And a packed Connors Connors Cross is, is, is a product that you, can, that you can sell. But the problem is, it just seems to be a token gesture in terms of... But well, Air Sport right, right, right. don't do that, Dennis. Air Sport do a good package. Like to be fair yes. to them, they put a good package together when they when they do um, show a game in Turners Cross. They've got they've got camera stands in different places up by St Anne's and stuff like that. You know. But and and that's what it's to be about. It's, but it's a case, it's a case of we we need to work from getting all of 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 football in Ireland together to rise. As I say, a rising tide brings all ships. Do you know what I mean? So like, that's what we need because if we get the local. Teams that are buying into Cork City, buying into Cove, and saying, "Yeah, I'll bring my young lads to those games." They want to play them. They want to go on further. You, they, they could see their next door neighbour playing on TV. Then the, the, the week after that, away to Dundalk or wherever, and then all of a sudden you have this this bigger entity than it is at the moment, which is really just surviving all the time. You know, mm-hmm. what we need is Facebook to take over the League of Ireland. That's what we need. But look, we'll move on. To, to, just talking to Roy there about like opportunities uh, on a global scale. Like if you look when you're growing up playing, you know there's a lot of good players that you played with. Like is there more? Like we were always concentrated on going to England and making a career there. No, you're after traveling the world. Do you think there's a lot more opportunity out there for fellas if they're hungry enough to to go and succeed? Ah, there is definitely, and I've been very fortunate. I mean. I've had a, played with a lot of great players, three of them there on this screen now. But, you know, over the years, and you learn something from everybody, like, you know, <laughs> you learn something from everybody. But, like, I think as you go, as you go along, the people say you find, you find your level. But I think you kind, you kind of find what suits you, you know. And I, I, what I've found since I've come over here, uh, I found a great, like, football and uh, life balance, you know, that I can actually enjoy my life and the lifestyle and still play my football at a very high level. Like, you know, I, I felt like in England for a few years, it was a bit, a bit of a miserable existence. Um, you know, injury here and there, it's rain outside, it's cold. So for, for me, the opportunity to come over here was one that not everybody gets. So I've been very fortunate to come and play my football here. But I do, I do kind of come back to that when I spoke to you before about it. Younger players have, have this kind of idea of, have to get to England if they want to be a footballer. Have to get to England. Have to play in the Premiership. To play in the Premiership, no, it, it's very, very difficult. And you're not, you're not going over and playing the Premiership as a teenager. You know, you, you have to be a man to play there, and that's if you get a chance at all. So I think that's where it comes back to the League of Ireland needs to be strong, and it needs to kind of build on the foundations that it does have, and it's had for a long time, but it hasn't really been marketed or supported just right. But I think why don't young players, if they have that bit of talent? And they're all getting agents now when they're 15 and 16, probably younger. Look at, try and get somewhere like Holland, Germany, France. If that's what suits your style of play, that's what comes back to the research again. If that's what suits your style of football, do it. Do something different because there's a lot of technically good football players out there. And, you know, they're wanting to go over to play in England in, in the championship. But there could be a coach there that wants to play a very direct style of football that mightn't suit 
their their game. So yeah, look, I think they have you have to look for opportunities and make them work for you, like you know. Yeah, if you look at that lad, it's at Juventus. Juventus or into Milan, into Milan from Clare. Yeah, I can't think his name now, but um, he, 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 that's it. So he decided he wanted to go and he wanted to play with a team and a club that suited the way he wanted to play. And there's good good noises coming out of there for him as well, you know. So exactly that that research, but I suppose it it's like everything, right? That this dream and this vision of the Premiership is is kind of it's unwaving, you know. If somebody says you're going to play with, you could be playing with Barnsley in the Premier League, you know. People don't even know what Barnsley is in the Premier League. They just know that they're in the Premier League, you know, kind of way. And what you go all of a sudden they go over and Barnsley is actually a very good academy, you know, one of the best academies in the UK now. And they get a great football, but they just see the Premier League. They don't actually see anything around it. So I think you're right. If you're if you're if you're a kid with with ability and people are sniffing around, then then then, then why wouldn't you do your research? It's your job. It's going to be your living. Do you know what I mean it, you wouldn't just jump into a job and say, well, I want to be a plumber today, and you've no you've no no inkling how to do anything with to do with that. You're, you're dead right. When you're, when you're young and you want something, you know you're oh you're blind about it. Yeah. So and you're you're desperate and you have this mindset. You watch matches every weekend and you watch all the the Super Sundays and you're like I have to get there. But really and truly, when you step back, is that going to suit your your kind of style of football? Is that going to suit your personality? Living in that kind of culture away from your family. So there's a lot of things after. I know Derek uh, Derek was at Brighton and and obviously Darren was over at Port Vale and Stevenage and you were at a few clubs as well yourself. It was at Reading as well as Hartlepool and. You know, so you kind of, you've all had a taste of it, but it, it's not as easy as you think it is when you're going away, you know. You're thinking, I'm leaving my family, I'm going to go over and play football and it's going to be brilliant. But it's tough, like, it's tough, it's a tough, it's a tough profession and, and that hasn't changed, you know. Going back to you saying, and you're, like, you know, you're enjoying it, you're, you need to enjoy your football. Yeah. But just what you're saying there, the, the English thing, it's so competitive that the enjoyment kind of, comes out of it a bit at times obviously you have great memories there and you you love playing football because it's your job but it's so competitive that you're constantly under pressure like you know you need to perform day in day out in training you need to be a certain way to probably you know even your personality has to be a certain way because you've assistant manager you've a coach and you've a manager or even a kit man or a physio when it didn't take a bad liking to you, it goes straight up to the manager, you know, this one is a bad egg. You know, it's a, you have to be on your toes constantly. Um, so, yeah, I get what you're saying. But it's not as if it's that easier in other countries as well. It's not going to be. But I think if you're, if, you're, if you're enjoying it every day and, as you said, style of football, whereas you don't have to change your style, that, may, that will make an awful difference to you. Definitely. Yeah, and as you said, I I think from our generation when we went away, and you can answer this yourselves, but I do think it was difficult because, as you said there, you felt like your your personality got stifled a little bit. They were trying to bring you down a peg or two, like they they wanted to break you down to build you back up. But as you said, in, in an ultra competitive environment that you're not used to, without your family around, it can be very cutthroat very quickly. Um, but I I don't think it's like that anymore. I think you know. It, Back in the day, you had to knock in the first team dressing room if you wanted to, wanted to go in there. You kind of couldn't talk to the, the senior players when you're doing your jobs, whatever it was, kit, doing the boots or whatever. Whereas I think now they don't have jobs and they, they have a little bit more freedom to be themselves. It's a little bit more... Laid yeah, back. And, 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 and Roy, but like what has been a great development for, from my time, especially, and, and your time, because I think Kevin Doyle really, um, he carved the pathway for a lot of us, for a lot of Irish players afterwards for the likes of you Ryan and you Dennis and Dan, like players started moving after Kevin Doyle like for when I was when I was playing back in the early days it was I think I mentioned this was Curtis Fleming and Paul McGrath were the two big two names that we household names that made the move from League of Ireland to uh, playing in England and the fact now that the likes of Shamrock Rovers and Dundalk can can educate their player and it's happening in other clubs but the fact that the infrastructure is there with training facilities and finances with Dundalk and Shamrock Rovers that players now don't have to make that move that wasn't an option for us we kind of if we wanted a career in football you had to make the move you had to learn your trade you had to emigrate at 16, 17, 18 whereas now there's an option there and, and that's the goal that's the ultimate and that's again one of the building blocks that we have to make this league work is to have our players learning their trade here if a man city comes in for like Gavin Bazunu brilliant but let's get some money out of it you know what I mean yeah, 
absolutely. I think that 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 is the, and that's great that, that we've progressed in that little bit. That Shamrock Rovers and Dung Dock have got their kind of stuff in order. Like you know, I know that two of the wealthier clubs, but they've done well. They both had European runs in the last kind of decade. Shamrock Rovers obviously won the Europa League uh, group stages, you know, back in the mid two thousands. But Dung Dock certainly have made a fortune of money in under Stephen Kenny in the last few years from their European runs. So at least they're using it wisely. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if and if you look at talking about the work life balance, Owen said it last week. You know he's what now twenty four, twenty five, more Owen, and mm-hmm. he was saying only now he's starting to understand himself and understand himself as being a player and being not over critical and 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 sitting back and kind of going, well, what am I good at? Where am I good? What can I do? And he's moved down the leagues to find that, and and he's he joined up with Brian Barry over there, and now he's really starting to enjoy it. But it took him from Celtic all the way to three or four long clubs back to City and over before he's actually found where he's happy, you know. And and ultimately, people see the Premier League and they see wherever as the, the holy grail. But you mightn't be happy there. At the end of the day, yes, there's the the money and the lifestyle, etc. But if you take all that away, are you actually happy with being over there and under that much pressure? Whereas if you look at what Ronan Finn did. You know, he resisted going over to the, to the UK several times, went up to the dock, back down to Shamrock Rovers, and he's probably living the best life he probably could be at the moment without making yeah. that move over to the, to the UK as well. So and Jack I think, it, and Jack Byrne as well, coming back around now again, you know. So I think there is a lot to be said about, like you said, researching what you want to really do and taking that step back, which is very hard at a young dad if somebody's coming in looking at you, but kind of going, where will I be happiest and, and understand? And where people understand me more and be appreciated more, because then that'll naturally mean you move on anyway, you know. It's a huge part of football as well, because you're talking about being happy and your mentality. Two biggest things to probably make it as a professional is is yeah. being happy and being, uh, you know, mentally right and on being able to understand yourself as a player and educate yourself as well, definitely. And um, just moving on as well to the last little bit. Uh, so, you, like you worked under Roy Keane, I know you speak about him quite highly as a co- as a coach and a manager. So, anyone that's listening in, uh, like what what made him that, that to to get uh, I suppose that coach or that manager to like what what, what was his style that made you um you know really res- gain his respect? Yeah, look, I, he he was a good guy. The way he spoke to me and the way he treated me that was the you know the way that he got my respect and like not only he was a great player he was a great leader but you know as a manager as well I thought he was a really strong character you know um, I think you know a lot of a lot of stuff you get here about him is, is usually people only want the headlines when it comes to Roy Keane and the explosive stuff but a uh, very intelligent guy very shrewd um, I thought he's very unfortunate that he hasn't stayed in, in management longer because uh, I think his attributes really suit it, you know. Uh, and like he had done really well, very young at Sunderland, you know. Obviously, his first job got him promoted from the Championship to the Premier League. Uh, that's success. And to keep him in the Premiership, that's real success, you know, as they can see now when they're in the third division and can't get, get out of it, like, you know. But uh, yeah, look, I thought he, he did a very good way about him. Uh, I think with anything, I think he. He'd probably tell you himself he'd like to do a bit more coaching. You know, I think he kind of went into that originally and he was kind of, he stood back more as the manager and kind of just said his piece. But um, yeah, when he when he did, you know, speak to the group, I thought he, he made some very good points. He didn't miss very much. And uh, yeah, when, when he used to join in and train and he could show us how to play as well, he still had it. Did he take Why? any of the sessions so as a coach? Sorry, lads. There you go. So he, yeah. stood, he stood back and managed when he first came in. Yeah, he stood. He kind of stood back and he kind of let his coaches run the session. Right. Um, Probably a good think, idea, like. Yeah, and I think he kind of had an overview of the players he wanted to bring in and the kind of style he wanted to put out there. But um, I think, especially, I think uh, the longer I was there, I think I could see that he he, he kind of had a, an itch to coach a little bit more. And I think uh, I think if he was going to go back in as a manager somewhere now, I think he would do a lot more coaching because. You know, if you're if the results aren't going your way, I think he could put more of a stamp on it himself, getting his points across to his players, um, on the training field rather than just in his his. Yeah, that that was the point I was going to make because you, you know yourself, being a good man manager and a coach, they're two separate entities completely, aren't they? You know, if you're a good man manager, in theory, you're happy with somebody else doing the coaching. 
it sounds that Roy really likes to be more hands on and being able to put his stamp on it a bit more, even though he could be a good man manager talking to. But it looks like that he was itching to do a little bit more of the coaching side of things. And I'd say he would have been happier doing that maybe a bit more if he had his way again, would he? I would say so. I think he was young as well. I think it's like we spoke earlier. He was trying to find his style. I suppose you'd be a lot more clued in here. I'm only starting my kind of coaching badges as such. But, you know, I think you have to find your style as a coach because it's completely different to being a player. So I think in your your first job or two, you kind of you probably make your mistakes. You find out how to deal with people and different personalities. Where I suppose the difference with Roy Keane there and Robbie Fowler they have a profile on them and pressure all the time. So kind of things have to work straight away. So maybe they haven't had that kind of, um, um, you know, freedom. Uh, to, to be Roy, what, what was his coach? What was his coach that he had like at Sunderland? The yeah. coach that was taking so the sessions. Like, yeah, like, yeah, so I suppose what, what I'm saying, if he had a top quality, it's not like you'd see, read a few reports that uh, Guardiola's right-hand man or uh, Klopp's right-hand man. Like if you have, if he had the right man in with him, yeah. Uh, well, look, the coaches he had were well, uh, were experienced. He trusted them, obviously. Uh, he kind of changed things up a little bit as well. Uh, so we had Neil Bailey, who he was the Man United reserve manager when he was at United. So that was kind of a, a continuation of what, where he was coming from. You know, we had a lot of players that he'd either played with at Man U or for Ireland. Um, and he had Tony Lachlan, who was his assistant, who was in the youth team with him at Nottingham Forest. Uh, when he first went there, he was a good, good friend to him. But again, he's he's an assistant manager still in the Premier League now with Burnley under Sean Dyche. So again, very well qualified coach. And Ricky Sprague, yeah, a Scottish lad who was at Man United as well, he came on later on. But I think just Roy's personality, you know, he, uh, he's got a great drive and a hunger to win. And that's that's obvious from Man You only have to watch Sky Sports to see him as a person, you know, his kind of values on the game and his, his kind of value system. But I think you need maybe at that time, maybe it would have been good for him to have someone between the dressing room and the manager's office that kind of, as you said, like Guardiola had Arteta that maybe was still in player mode that kind of could, you know, help relate. people through. Yeah, yeah, yeah relate. I, al- I always felt, I always felt right that you actually, and I, I'm, I'm reading something, da- Daniel Abrahams is, has a kind of a course, a uh, sports psychology thing, and he, he he's a big, um, he's a big believer in, I suppose, emulating someone that, you want to be like, or even maybe in animal form. So if you if you write a three, three key um, phrases that that would describe your dream game, say, and then and then think of an animal that would that would replicate. So like for you, maybe it could be fast and dynamic, whatever. It could be like a cheetah. Do you know what I mean? Or whatever. Just just think of yourself in in, in that terms. But they also say about players to to emulate players that you that you would like to to play like. And I always felt that you had a lot of Roy's mannerisms. And I don't know, was that a conscious thing when you were young? Looking up to him, that did you take on board some of his mannerisms? Uh, I don't know. Was it a conscious thing? Obviously, I was a big fan. Obviously, you know, from the north side and uh, a great player as a man. You know, I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit the upbringing. Maybe, maybe, or maybe it's kind of a nature versus nurture thing. Like you know, just kind of mm-hmm. survival kind of instinct. You know, coming from that area. Maybe, yeah. maybe he's a real dad. Never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the Roy. Roy Jr. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, but, to, uh, ju- just to finish up there, Roy, so like, what, what bits of advice would you give to younger players? Uh, look, with, with football, it comes back to enjoyment and just working hard. Um, you're going to get knocked down. You're going to get knocked back. It's just, just about getting back up again. Keep doing that for the rest of your life. If you want to be in football because there's a, there's more bad days than good ones, but when you when you get the good days, they're extra sweet. Brilliant! Thanks for coming on, and I uh, hope you Cheers, like uh, FVTV yes, Zoom yes. Room. And um, if you're watching, please like and share, uh, promote us so we can try and get more players on and keep giving you some free content. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> bye bye.